Hello students, in the previous video I explained about C3 pathway. Now in this video, I am going to start with the another pathway that occurs in C3 plants that is photorespiratory pathway, photorespiration. Okay, so this photorespiration is also called as PCO cycle. PCO cycle that is photosynthetic carbon oxidation cycle. Photosynthetic carbon oxidation cycle. Carbon oxidation cycle. And it is also called as C2 cycle because the substrate for this pathway is 2 carbon compound. Hence it is called as C2 cycle. And the details of this pathway is discovered and explained by two scientists. They are Dickens and Teo. So Dickens and Teo, two scientists observed this pathway in tobacco plant and they, they gave the details of this pathway which occurs in tobacco plant. So tobacco plant is C3 plant. C3 plant. This pathway occurs in C3 plants only and this pathway is completely absent in C4 plants. C4 plants. Okay, so before starting with this, with the details of this pathway, let's study the details of an enzyme Rubisco. Rubisco. So Rubisco enzyme is RUBP carboxylase oxygenase enzyme. That means it functions as carboxylase and even oxygenase. Now let's see under what conditions it functions as carboxylase and under what conditions it functions as oxygenase inside the cell. So actually Rubisco enzyme consists of active site. This enzyme Rubisco consists of active site. So this is active site. So into this active site carbon dioxide can bind or oxygen can bind. If carbon dioxide binds with this active site it functions as carboxylase. If oxygen binds it functions as oxygenase. Now let's study under what conditions it functions as carboxylase and under what conditions it functions as oxygenase. So when the carbon dioxide concentration is more inside the cell than oxygen it functions as carboxylase. That means it is involved in the carboxylation of RUBP. That means it is involved in fixation of carbon dioxide into RUBP which leads to carboxylation of RUBP which leads to the occurrence of photosynthesis inside the plant. So it leads to the occurrence of photosynthesis. Okay, now let's see under what conditions it functions as oxygenase. This enzyme functions as oxygenase. Right. So this enzyme functions as oxygenase. Rubisco shows more affinity towards oxygen than towards carbon dioxide under high temperature conditions. Under high temperature conditions and and under higher light intensity when the light incident light is with high light intensity. So when the intensity of light is more, sunlight is more. And when the concentration of oxygen is more inside the cell than the concentration of carbon dioxide, Rubisco so shows more affinity towards oxygen. That means oxygen comes and binds with the active site of this enzyme which leads to oxygenation, which leads to the enzyme to function as oxygenase. So this uh, enzyme functions as oxygenase. So when it functions as oxygenase, what it causes? So when it is functioning as oxygenase, it causes the breakdown or oxidation of organic compounds by oxygen. That is oxygenation here. So here when it is functioning as oxygenase, it causes the oxidation, oxidation or breakdown of organic compounds, organic compounds by oxygen. So actually Breakdown of organic compounds by oxygen is called as respiration that is aerobic respiration. Now this breakdown of organic compounds by oxygen is taking place in the presence of sunlight. Hence it is called as it is taking place in the presence of sunlight. Hence it is called as what? Photorespiration. So breakdown of organic compounds by oxygen is respiration. In the presence of sunlight is photorespiration. Okay. So what happens during this photorespiration, during this photorespiration? So let's study some differences between this respiration and photorespiration. Differences between respiration and photorespiration.
Okay, differences between respiration and photorespiration. Respiration and photorespiration. In case of respiration, there is oxidation, that is breakdown of organic compounds with the release of energy. So, energy is released, so ATP. That energy which is released in the form of heat energy is trapped inside the cell in the form of heat energy. Heat energy. So, we can say that ATP, there is release of ATP. So, there is release of ATP. But in case of photorespiration, there is no release of ATP. That means there is no synthesis of ATP. But instead, there is consumption of ATP. ATP is utilized. Utilized. Utilization of ATP. Okay. Now, let's study the differences between photorespiration, photorespiration and photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. So, what happens during photosynthesis? During photosynthesis, there is utilization of energy and even during photorespiration also there is utilization of energy. During photosynthesis, there is synthesis of organic compounds. Synthesis of organic compounds occurs by the utilization of energy. But here, in case of photorespiration, there is no synthesis of organic compounds but there is breakdown. Breakdown of organic compounds and there is utilization of energy breakdown of organic compounds compounds and one more difference between this photorespiration and photosynthesis is in case of photorespiration oxygen is absorbed utilized consumed and carbon dioxide is released so oxygen is consumed and carbon dioxide is released. Whereas in case of photosynthesis what happens? Carbon dioxide is consumed. That means it is fixed. And oxygen is released through the process of photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide is consumed, utilized. So here what can we say finally that through this photorespiration there is no synthesis of energy. But instead there is consumption of energy. And there is no utilization of energy. Instead there is break. There is no uh, synthesis of uh, energy and there is no synthesis of organic compounds also. Instead, there is utilization of energy in the form of ATP and there is breakdown of organic compounds. Okay. So, where this ATP is utilized in which organelle? Actually, this photorespiration occurs uh, in cooperation between three organelles. Uh, that is, occurs by the involvement of three organelles. They are chloroplast, peroxisome and mitochondrion. Mitochondrion. So, where this energy, in which organelle this energy is utilized in the form of ATP means, that is in chloroplast. During which step? During the uh, synthesis, that is during the phosphorylation of phosphoglyceric acid, phosphorylation of glyceric acid into phosphoglyceric acid, this ATP is utilized. Hence, as there is no synthesis of energy and as there is no synthesis of food, instead and as there is a release of a utilization of energy instead of synthesis of food for uh, instead of synthesis of food it is considered as a wasteful process which occurs in c3 plants but which does not occur in c4 plants now let's study the details of this photorespiration which occurs in these three cell organs by the involvement of these cell, three cell organs that is chloroplast peroxisome and mitochondrion a little bit in more detail Okay, let's study this photorespiration in detail. So, this photorespiration as we discussed, it occurs in co uh, cooperation between uh, three cell organelles present inside the cell. They are chloroplast, peroxisome and mitochondrion. Okay, so inside the chloroplast, two molecules of oxygen is fixed into two molecules of RUBP by the activity of an enzyme Rubisco. Here Rubisco is functioning as oxygenase resulting in the formation of or resulting in the breakdown of this RUVP into two compounds, two compounds. So, these two compounds are 3-PGA, 3-phosphoglyceric acid and 2-phosphoglycolic acid. So, two molecules of 3-PGA which is 3-carbon compound and two molecules of phosphoglycolic acid which is 2-carbon compound is formed. Now, these two molecules of phosphoglycolic acid undergoes dephosphorylation inside the chloroplast by the activity of an enzyme phosphatase resulting in the formation of two molecules of glycolic acid or glycolate which is two carbon compound. So, two phosphates are released and two molecules of glycolic acid is formed. Now, these two 
molecules of glycolic acid are glycolate leaves chloroplast and enters into peroxisome so inside the peroxisome these two molecules of glycolic acid or glycolate undergoes oxidation by the activity of an enzyme oxidase so this is the structure of this glycolic acid from this glycolic acid when it undergoes oxidation by the activity of oxidase enzyme hydrogens are released two hydrogens are released these two hydrogens combine with combine with oxygen resulting in the formation of hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide so once this hydrogen peroxide is formed inside the peroxisome there is an enzyme called peroxidase inside this inside this peroxisome which causes the breakdown of peroxisome sorry hydrogen peroxide into water and and oxygen water and nascent oxygen hence what we say peroxisome is involved in protecting the plant cells from the toxic effects of hydrogen peroxide which is released into peroxisome during photorespiration during the pathway called photorespiration okay so now this glycolic acid undergoes oxidation into glyoxalic acid so this is the structure of glyoxalic acid which consists of aldehyde group so acid has been converted into aldehyde by after removal of two hydrogens okay now this glyoxalic acid undergoes amination that is transamination by the activity of an enzyme transaminase into two molecules of glycine which is again two carbon amino acid right now uh, so what is happening here during transamination amino group has been transferred on to glyoxalic acid and hence this glyoxalic acid has been aminated into glycine so we, which compound is providing donating this amino group means glutaric acid is donating this amino group generally glutamic acid is not glutaric glutamic glutamic acid is involved in donating amino group wherever amination is taking place inside the cell so two molecules of glutamic acid donates two amino groups to this two molecules of glyoxalic acid and hence it has been converted into amino acid two molecules of an amino acid called glycine which is two carbon amino acid so after donating uh, amino group glutamic ha acid has been converted into alpha ketoglutaric acid okay now this glycine leaves peroxisome and enters into mitochondrion inside the mitochondrion this glycine undergoes decarboxylation deamination and oxidation when it undergoes decarboxylation one carbon dioxide is released when it undergoes deamination it uh, loses one ammonia group and when it undergoes oxidation glycine uh, two protons and electrons are released these two protons and electrons are picked up by nad plus and hence it is reduced into nadh so there is synthesis of one molecule of nadh inside the mitochondrion so this amo amino group ammonia which is released due to deamination of glycine is transferred on to alpha glutaric acid present inside the peroxisome and hence one molecule of alpha glutaric acid has been converted back into one molecule of glutamic acid only one molecule one molecule of glutamic acid okay so by undergoing uh, decarboxylation deamination and oxidation this glycine has been converted into serine so here two molecules of glycine two molecules of glycine glycine is two carbon compound two carbon amino acid so two molecules of two carbon amino acid becomes how many carbons four carbons as it loses one carbon in the form of one carbon dioxide molecule the resultant product formed is one molecule of serine which is three carbon amino acid so now this serine leaves mitochondrion and enters into peroxisome inside the peroxisome this serine undergoes deamination by the activity of an enzyme deaminase now this ammonia which is released from the serine has been transferred on to alpha ketoglutaric acid and hence one more alpha ketoglutaric acid has been converted back into glutamic acid so two molecules of glutamic acid which is converted into alpha ketoglutaric acid by losing amino group by donating amino group to glyoxalic acid has been regenerated by receiving amino group one ammonia one amino group from mitochondrion and one amino group from peroxisome itself right now this uh, hydroxypyruvic acid 
So after deamination, what is formed? Hydroxypyruvic acid. Now this hydroxypyruvic acid, which is 3-carbon acid, undergoes reduction by the activity of an enzyme reductase. So when it undergoes reduction for uh, to be reduced, what it requires? It requires protons and electrons. These protons and electrons are donated by NAD+. Plus, sorry, NADH. So NADH by donating protons and electrons, it has been oxidized into NAD+. Plus, Whereas hydroxypyruvic acid has been reduced into glyceric acid. Now this glyceric acid that is 3 carbon compound, 3 carbon acid is leaving peroxisome and entering into chloroplast. Now this glyceric acid, glyceric acid which has entered into chloroplast undergoes phosphorylation. Phosphorylation that means addition of phosphate. This phosphate is donated by ATP. After donating one phosphate it has been converted into ADP. Resulting in the formation of a compound called 3 phosphoglyceric acid, which is 3 carbon compound. Now, this uh, uh, one molecule of 3 PGA and these two, three molecules of 3 PGA, one molecule of 3 PGA and two molecules of 3 PGA together undergo regeneration into RUBP. So, they are undergoing regeneration into RUBP. So, this RUBP can enter into C3 pathway. C3 pathway. So, this is about different reactions which are taking place inside uh, during photorespiration. Okay, let's see some points, important points related to this photorespiration. So, the compound which is leaving chloroplast in and entering into peroxisome is glycolate or glyoxy, glyoxyl, sorry, glycolic acid. And the compound which is leaving peroxisome and entering into mitochondrion is glycine. And the compound which is leaving mitochondrion and entering into peroxisome is serine. The compound which is leaving peroxisome and entering back into chloroplast is glyceric acid. Okay. So, where oxidation occurs? Oxidation occurs in chloroplast. Here, oxidation occurs in chloroplast and even in peroxisome peroxisome and where decarboxylation occurs decarboxylation is taking place inside the mitochondrion due to which one molecule of carbon dioxide is released from glycine and hence glycine has been converted into serine okay so inside the chloroplast phosphorylation is taking dephosphorylation is taking place and even phosphorylation is taking place that is dephosphorylation of phosphoglyceric acid glycolic acid into glycolic acid and phosphorylation of glyceric acid into 3PGA is taking place. So, inside the chloroplast, what are the reactions that are taking place? Oxidation is taking place, dephosphorylation and phosphorylation is taking place. Now, inside the peroxisome, what are the reactions that are taking place? Oxidation is taking place and reduction is occurring. And even amination, amination, transamination is taking place and even deamination is taking place. Amination and deamination and transamination is taking place. Okay, inside the mitochondrion, what are the reactions that are taking place? Decarboxylation, deamination, and oxidation. These are the reactions which are taking place inside the mitochondrion. Okay, so here actually what uh, we are saying photorespiration is nothing but respiration. Respiration means oxidation, breakdown of organic compounds. So Photo means which occurs in the presence of sunlight that is photorespiration. So um, breakdown of organic compounds by oxygen in the presence of sunlight is photorespiration. So here where this actual breakdown is taking place in which organelle inside the mitochondrion due to which one carbon is released, one carbon is lost from glycine. Okay, let's see uh, how this breakdown is taking place. So actually chloroplast is losing four carbons it is losing four carbons that means two molecules of two carbon compound that is glycolic acid is leaving chloroplast that means four carbons are lost from chloroplast okay so these four carbons which enter into peroxisome are entering into are entering into mitochondrion inside this mitochondrion these four carbons that is two molecules of glycine that is four carbons is undergoing decarboxylation so that one carbon is lost one carbon is lost and only three carbons are remaining so these three carbons are entering back into peroxisome and these three carbons are entering back into 
chloroplast that means chloroplast has lost it is losing four carbons but it is gaining three carbons that means one carbon has been lost one carbon has been broken down that means breakdown of organic compound is taking place okay so it is losing four carbons from four carbons how many uh, carbons are lost one carbon is lost that means 25 percent of the carbon is lost whereas three carbons this chloroplast is three gaining three carbons back it is receiving three carbons back that means it is uh, gaining 75 percent of the carbons back it is receiving 75 percent of the carbons back okay so this is all about photorespiration and I want to discuss some more important points related to this photorespiration.